Hello, welcome. In this session, we focus on rotational dynamics, and there is this question of June 2021, which is talking particularly about the reaction at the axis of rotation. The question says a uniform square PQRS has sides of length 2A and is of mass KM, where K is a positive constant. The lamina is free to rotate in a vertical plane about a horizontal axis through P. The lamina is slightly displaced from its position of unstable equilibrium. Given that the components parallel and perpendicular to PR of the reaction at the axis when PR makes an angle pi over 4 with the upward vertical through P, are x and y respectively roman one find x and y in terms of k for 10 marks given that x equals 5 root 2 minus 6 mg and y equals root 2 on 2 mg roman two find the value of k for four marks so this was june 2021 of further mathematics paper three of the Cameroon GCE board. Okay, to start solving the question, we have the square lamina presented here. It is said to be of sides P, Q, R, S. And we are told that it is made to rotate about an axis through the point or through the vertex P. The axis is horizontal and is perpendicular to the plane of the square lamina. And so if we represent that axis through P, the moment of inertia about that axis, we can call it IP. To calculate the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis P, we need to also know the moment of inertia of the square lamina about a horizontal axis perpendicular to the plane of the lamina and passing through the center. So that is the axis through the center G. And so the moment of inertia about that point should be IG. The axis is horizontal. comes out that way. The square is said to be of side 2a. And so to calculate the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis through P, because we need it in the subsequent calculation, that is one of the steps that you would have to do anytime you see a question involving rotational dynamics. You must know the moment of inertia about the axis in question. So that is our first step. It is needed before any other thing. To calculate that moment of inertia about P, we don't have an, a direct way of getting it. So we have to use the parallel axis theorem because the axis through P is parallel to the axis through G, perpendicular to the plane of the axis. So we need the distance between the two parallel axes. So this distance from the axis to the center of gravity is needed even in the subsequent parts of the equation. We always need the distance between the axis and the center of gravity. If I drop a perpendicular from the center G to the side PQ, I will have a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse is the distance D I am seeking to find. Let us say it touches PQ at N, then PN is half of PQ. PQ being 2A, then PN should be A. GN is half of RQ and so it is also A because RQ is 2A. And so by Pythagoras theorem, d squared should be a squared plus a squared. And that gives 2a squared 
so that d should be root 2a. We need that distance. Now, to calculate the moment of inertia of P, about the axis through P, sorry, we need the moment of inertia about the axis through the center of gravity and perpendicular to the plane of the lamina. Then by the parallel axis theorem, we can then be able to calculate the moment of inertia about an axis through P. So we start with IG, generally for a rectangle, moment of inertia about the center passing, uh, the moment of inertia of the rectangle about a horizontal axis perpendicular to the plane of the rectangle and passing through the center is given by the general formula mass of rectangle all over 12 into the length of the rectangle squared plus the width of the rectangle squared. This formula is not in the formula booklet, so you have to master it while entering the exam room. In this case, the mass of the square is said to be km, so km over 12 into, we are dealing with a square here, and a square is the special case of a rectangle where the length and the width are the same. So my length will be 2a and my width will still be 2a. So I have the length as 2a all squared plus the width 2a all squared. This gives km all over 12 into 4a squared plus 4a squared which gives 8a squared. And that gives 2kma squared all over 3 when you divide by 4 you divide both the numerator and denominator by 4 sorry and IP now by the parallel axis theorem is supposed to be IG plus the mass of the square times the square of the distance between the two parallel axes so this is the parallel axis theorem and so IP should be IG which are just from getting up 2 km a squared all over 3 plus km into D squared D squared is 2 a squared and so we have that IP equals 3 times 2 Give 6 plus 2, 8. 8 km a squared all over 3. So that is the moment of inertia about the axis through P and horizontal but perpendicular to the plane of the disk. We need that moment of inertia as we are solving subsequent parts of the equation. Remember again, the question has asked us to find the components of the reaction at the axis which are acting along the line PR so the axis along the line PR and perpendicular to PR to get those to get those components of the reaction at the axis we need expressions for angular speed d theta dt or theta dot and angular acceleration which is d squared theta over dt squared or theta dot dot theta dot can be obtained from the energy equation and so we need to conserve mechanical energy in order to obtain the energy equation and from there we can obtain the expression for theta dot and so in the next part of the question we are going to consider remember again the question says the lamina is slightly displaced from its position of unstable equilibrium and given that the components parallel and perpendicular to PR of the reaction at the axis when PR makes angle 
pi over 4 with the upward vertical. Generally, when a lamina is suspended at one of its vertices or at any point on its plane, the axis P, the center G, will be directly below the axis. And so, and this is the position of equilibrium. So if I have the square in this form, it means that somewhere down we have R. So the, the diagonal PR is now vertical in equilibrium position. means that the square now takes this form and so the weight is acting vertically down kmg and the distance from p to g we are just from getting it as root 2 a we need that distance so this is the position of stable equilibrium. When I start the analysis, I will not need to be drawing the whole square in my various diagrams. What is of prime importance is this line joining the axis and the center of gravity, PG. So in subsequent diagrams, you will not see me drawing the complete square because it's not of importance to me. What is important is the line joining P and G, the axis and the center. And so for it to be in a position of unstable equilibrium, it should be the case where PR, we are talking about PR, the diagonal, where the center is along there, the diagonal should have been displaced. And the angle is said to be with the upward vertical when it is released from the position of unstable equilibrium. It implies that if my G is here, for it to be in a position of unstable equilibrium so that as it begins to fall back to the equilibrium position, the angle is made with the upward vertical, then I should have the case where we have turned R until R G P is upside down, which means the particle should have or the, the square lamina should have been turned until P the axis is down here and g again my interest is g not till the end r so i just indicate where the weight is acting is now above the weight is above at g and that weight is said to be k m g because the mass is k m and so this is the initial position position as we are conserving mechanical energy i would define my potential energy equals zero level pe equals zero and from here in a general position the axis p again would be here but this time the lamina has fallen until G is somewhere here. The original vertical position being here, the angle PR, which is the same as the angle formed by PG because R is beyond G. As I said, I don't need R, I need but G, which is of importance in my calculation. So the angle is said to be made with the upward vertical so this is the angle if they said with the downward vertical the particle should have been somewhere down this way 
so it is with the upward vertical so it starts from somewhere up and then falls to the position where it is now the distance again between p and g is root 2 a and as i will be finding potential energy i need the perpendicular distance from where the weight is acting kmg to the p equals zero level this angle being theta this other one should be theta because it is alternate to this one and this height which i need for my potential energy should then be the hypotenuse of the triangle which is root 2a times cos theta and so i can now begin with conservation of mechanical energy remember the rotation is in this direction and so when i conserve mechanical energy i'll be talking of initial potential energy plus initial kinetic energy should be equal to final potential energy plus final kinetic energy potential energy at this point from p from g to p again we said the distance is root 2 a and so potential energy is positive in this case because the center of gravity is above the zero level if it were below the zero level it should be negative and so the mass which is k m g then times the distance from the center to the axis which is root 2 a should give the potential energy at this point should give the potential energy at the initial position plus zero kinetic energy because initially before the square is released there is no motion where there is no motion there is no kinetic energy so we have equal to in this final position or the general position we have again potential energy being positive because it is above the zero level and it is given by the mass km times the acceleration due to gravity times the height of the center of gravity of the lamina above the zero level which is root 2 a cos theta then plus the kinetic energy at this general position which is supposed to be half i theta dot squared and so we have kmg root 2 a equals kmg root 2 a cos theta plus half into this is supposed to be IP, the moment of inertia of the square lamina about the axis at P. And we were just from calculating it. It gave 8 km a squared over 3. Then times the square of the angular speed. From here the KMs would cancel and then the A's would cancel. Here is A squared so the square would just cancel and we are left with A. 2 would cancel 8 to give 4 and so we have that 3 root 2 G into 1 minus cos theta should be equal to 4 a theta dot squared and so we have that theta dot squared should be equal to 3 root 2 g into 1 minus cos theta all of uh, 4 a and now this reaction is said to be 
at the point where the angle PR makes with the vert with the upward vertical is pi on 4. So we proceed to find the value of theta dot squared when theta is pi on 4. When theta equals pi on 4, theta dot squared would be equal to 3 root 2 g over 4a into 1 minus cos pi on 4 which is root 2 on 2 and so we get 3 root 2 g all over 4a into 2 minus root 2 all over 2 which gives 3 root 2 g all over 8 a for 8 times 2 will give 8 a into 2 minus root 2 again we also need after having found an expression for the angular speed theta dot we also need an expression for theta dot dot the angular acceleration so in order to get an expression for the angular acceleration theta dot dot I need to differentiate this energy equation with respect to t so I should have d over dt of theta dot squared equals d over dt of 3 root 2 g all over 4 a into 1 minus cos theta to differentiate the left hand side I have theta dot squared that is the function of a function it's a composite function because theta dot is a function and the square is also a function. So we use the power rule whereby we first differentiate theta dot squared. We get 2 theta dot and then we now differentiate theta dot according to the chain rule or the power rule generally which should give us theta dot dot. So that is the power rule. A function is raised to a power first differentiate the function that is raised to that power we have 2 theta dot then the differential of the function that is squared which is theta dot which has been squared the differential of theta dot with respect to t gives theta dot dot so we have that on the left hand side equals now on the right hand side the the variable is not t because i'm differentiating with respect to t i don't have t i have but theta so I'll first differentiate with respect to that theta that is there. The expression and then multiply the result by d theta dt according to the chain rule. And so differentiating now here with respect to theta, I get 3 root 2g all over 4a into we differentiate one you have zero differentiate cos theta with respect to theta you have negative sine theta so negative of negative sine theta times theta dot d theta dt is theta dot so we get two theta dot theta dot dot equals that expression theta dot is common on both sides will so cancel and we have that theta dot dot equals three root two g all over 8a sine theta is the expression for theta dot dot again the reaction at the axis the components we are required to find are for the case where theta is pi on 4 so we need to find the value of theta dot dot at that point you say when theta equals pi on 4 theta dot dot should be 3 root 2 g sine pi on 4 all over 8 a and that gives 3 root 2 g into sine pi on 4 is root 2 on 2 all that over 8 a root 2 times root 2 would cancel this 2 and we are just left with 3g all over 8a as the expression for theta dot dot 
we need that result for the subsequent calculation of the components of the reaction. And now to get the reactions at the pulley, I will draw again the general diagram indicating the final position. So I am interested in the distance from the axis at P to the center of gravity of the square lamina. So I don't need the whole, I don't need the whole diagram. This is my line of interest. The distance between P and G. G, the center of gravity, P, the axis. At this point, you have to be very careful. In order to indicate the components of the reaction at the pulley, I would first have to resolve the weight. The weight is acting vertically downwards and is given by Km, the mass of the square lamina which is acting at G there, times the acceleration due to gravity. In order to indicate the components of the reaction at the axis, I need to first resolve, always, you first resolve the components, uh, resolve the weight at G into its components, a component that is perpendicular to the line PR, which the equation is saying, and I'm saying that I need to understand what is happening but between P and G. G lies along that PR, so whatever we are analyzing includes the R by extension. And so just from P to G, that is the line PR that I'm using. And so a component perpendicular to PG for the weight, which is PR, is this direction. Remember that this is theta, the angle that PR is making with the downward or with the upward vertical, sorry. And so I resolve the weight, this angle is still theta. And so when I resolve the weight, I should have a component that is parallel and a component that is perpendicular. To find the component that is perpendicular and the one that is parallel, so this component that is parallel is at the adjacent of the angle. Again, this and this are parallel, so this angle is still alternate to this one. So this is theta, and so this component is at the adjacent while this other one is at the opposite. So KMG sine theta is the component perpendicular to PR, while this other component is KMG cos theta, the component parallel to PR. And so now with the components of the weight in place, I can now be able to put the components of the reaction because the components of the reaction depend on or are influenced by the components of the weight. So there will be a component of the reaction again along PR and another one perpendicular to PR. And these components are in such a way as to oppose the directions of the components of the weight. So that is why it's important to first resolve the weight before indicating the components of the reaction. The component of the weight parallel to PR, we can better indicate it here. It is KMG cos theta. And so it is acting towards the axis. And so the reaction of the axis at that point should be opposite to it. Remember, action and reaction are supposed to be 
opposite. So that is the principle. We are looking at the reaction to what force. So this reaction of the axis is to the component of the weight parallel to PR. So take note. And the component that is perpendicular to PR again has to oppose that of the weight that is perpendicular. Since that of the weight is acting down this way, that of the axis should be opposite to it. So perpendicular to PR but opposite. The one parallel to PR has been given as X and the one perpendicular to PR in the equation is given as Y. Now, once we have these components in place, it's good to remember that rotation is in this direction. So, theta dot. This is the direction of theta dot. And we have the acceleration components. which are perpendicular to each other. We have a component that is acting towards the axis and one that is acting perpendicular to the axis in the direction of rotation. And so there is one component down this way. The component that is towards the axis is always given by R theta dot squared. So it is R theta dot squared where r is the radius of rotation or the distance between the axis and the center of gravity which in this case is root 2a so this is root 2a theta dot squared while this is supposed to be r theta dot dot that is the component perpendicular to the line joining the axis and the center of gravity and r being root 2a we then have root 2a theta dot dot in order to find x and y as the equation has specified we need to resolve parallel to pr and then perpendicular to pr so resolving resolving parallel to PR, we have that the acceleration is towards P, so the leading force should be mg cos theta and the opposing force x. So the resultant force then should be kmg cos theta minus x equals ma, the mass times the acceleration in that direction, the mass of the square being km. And the acceleration along the line PR is root 2 theta dot squared. So the acceleration there is, sorry, root 2 A. Supposed to be root 2 A theta dot squared. When theta equals pi on 4, because we are asked to calculate these reactions when theta is pi on 4, we have that kmg cos theta. Now, because pi on 4 minus x should be equal to km root 2a, then we substitute the value of theta dot squared that we had in the previous results. It gave 3 root 2g all over 8a into 2 minus root 2. So we proceed to replace it with 3 root 2 g all over 8a into 2 minus root 2. So it follows that kmg root 2 on 2 cos pi on 4 is root 2 on 2 minus x equals a will cancel a root 2 times root 2 will cancel it because root 2 times root 2 is 2 will cancel it to give 4 so we end up with 3 k 
aqui mg all over 4 into 2 minus root 2 and we are seeking to find x so we make x the subject we send x the other way and this one this way so I get k m g root 2 on 2 minus 3 k m g on 4 into 2 minus root 2 equals x and so x should be equal to find the LCM on the left hand side which is 4 2 k m g root 2 minus 3 that gives 6 3 times 2 is 6 k m g the negative 3 times negative 2 should give plus 3 root 2 k m g and so x should be equal to 2 root 2 kmg plus 3 root 2 kmg gives 5 root 2 kmg minus 6 kmg all over 4 which is the same as 1 quarter into 5 root 2 minus 6 kmg so we can conclude that the component of the weight that is parallel to pr equals 1 quarter into 5 root 2 minus 6 kmg and then to find the component of the reaction perpendicular to pr we have to resolve perpendicular to pr the acceleration being downwards in this direction we need to get the resultant force in that direction which is kmg sine theta minus y resolving perpendicular to pr we would have that so when you resolve perpendicular to PR the component in the direction of the acceleration is kmg sine theta minus the component of the reaction perpendicular to PR and that should be equal to ma according to Newton's second law so kmg sine theta minus y equals km the mass times the acceleration in that direction which is root 2 a theta dot dot but when theta equals pi on 4 again the value of that reaction that component of the reaction when theta equals pi on 4 theta dot dot was found to be 3g over 8a in previous work and so we have that k m g sine pi on 4 which is root 2 on 2 minus y should be equal to k m root 2 a into 3g all over 8a the value of theta dot dot at that point and so we have to simplify by cancelling the 8 by cancelling a and then make y the subject we send y that way negative y goes there to become positive and so we talk of root 2 on 2 k m g minus 3 root 2 on 8 k 
okay mg equals y the lcm is 8 and we get 4 root 2 kmg minus 3 root 2 kmg equals y therefore y equals 4 root 2 minus 3 root 2 is simply root 2 so we get root 2 all over 8 kmg as the component of the reaction perpendicular to the line pr in terms of k as the question specified so all that was roman 1 then roman 2 we are given that x equals 5 root 2 minus 6 mg and y equals root 2 on 2 mg and we are then asked to find the value of k for 4 max so here it suffices to compare the x component that we were just from finding to this or the y component they should give the same value of k if the solving is correct so we say comparing y components we should have that root 2 all over 8k mg should be equal to root 2 over 2 mg mg's will cancel and then root 2 cancels also and so we have that k over 8 equals 1 over 2 2k equals 8 implying that k equals 4 so we have k over 8 after cancellation we are left with k over 8 equals half cross multiplying we get 2k equals 8 following that k equals 4 as the positive constant that the equation specified alternatively we can get k by comparing the x components x was found to be one quarter into five root two minus six kmg so if you equate it to the component given 5 root 2 minus 6 mg again you can simplify mg's will cancel 5 root 2 minus 6 would also cancel to give 1 on that side and we have that k over 4 equals 1 implying that k equals 4 again as before